I'm speaking today on God is faithful. God is faithful. Last week, I spoke on God is able. And the same God who is able is also faithful. Everybody say, God is faithful. All right. And remember, we have communion today. So if I don't finish my message, I'll continue next week because we need to make time for communion as well. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 9. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 9. And this is what it says, Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 9. Therefore know that the Lord your God, he is God, the faithful God who keeps covenant and mercy for a thousand generations with those who love him and keep his commandments. Know that the Lord your God, he is God, the faithful God. And you can underline that phrase, faithful God, in your Bible or highlight it in your Bible. Knowing who God is helps us to relate to him better. As in all relationships... The more you know a person, the better you relate with him. The more you know your husband, the better you relate to him. The more you know your wife, the better you relate to her. The more you know your children, each one, the better you relate to them. The more you know your parents, the better you relate. It's in all relationships. Ignorance disturbs relationships. So many of us relate with God without knowing God. So our relationship with God may be sincere, but may also come out of ignorance. And, and one of the things we have to know in relating with God is that he is faithful. Everybody say, God is faithful. Amen. Now, in biblical Hebrew, the word faith and faithful are related. Faith and faithful are related. So when we operate in faith, we operate based on the faithfulness of God. If you don't understand the faithfulness of God, you would not know how to deal with in faith, and I will touch a bit on that next week. So look at the passage again. Therefore know that the Lord your God, he is God, the faithful God. I love that. The faithful God. So what does the word faithful mean? The Hebrew word that is translated as faithful a man or a man has a close relationship with a word that is also translated amen. They come from the same root word. Amen and faithful are the same. So when we say God is faithful, we can also say God is amen. Amen means it is so, and it shall be so forever. God is faithful. Three words that are related to faithful. First, when something is faithful, it means it is permanent. It is permanent. It does not change. So when we say God is faithful... We mean it, he is permanent. He does not change. Secondly, when we say something is faithful, it means it is established. It is firm and secure. Doesn't move. 
So permanent, established, and the third word is reliable. Something that can be trusted. That's what the word faithful implies. Permanence, it implies establishment, it implies reliability. Now faithfulness can be found both in God and in human beings. But we are focusing on God. The word faithful in the Hebrew, the Hebrew word is a picture or the Hebrew language is a picture language. So most of the words in Hebrew have create pictures in your mind. And one of the images that is created about something that is faithful is the pillar on which a door swings. The pillar on which a door swings. Isn't it interesting? So God is faithful. He is the pillar on which the door swings. Now every door has got a pillar attached to it. A door moves, but the pillar doesn't move. And the door by itself cannot open unless it has a pillar it is attached to. So if you bring this to our knowledge of God, it means that every door that God opens, every opportunity that God opens for you, every miracle that God does for you, is hooked up to a pillar, his faithfulness. And without his faithfulness, nothing can move in your life. He is the faithful God. He is the constant and the permanent who makes things move in our lives. God is faithful. God is faithful. Without God's faithfulness, there will be no open doors and there will be no blessing. So let's look at the phrase, God is faithful. God is faithful. Every blessing we receive from God comes from his faithfulness. Comes from his faithfulness. And so what do we mean when we say God is faithful? First, we mean that God does not change. God does not change. It may seem like a very uh, ordinary statement or observation, but it's a very powerful statement that God does not change. Why does God not change? Because God never grows and never improves. God never grows and never improves. Why do human beings change? Because we grow and we improve. So what I said when I was six years old, when I grow and I improve, I will not say the same thing. So if at six years old I say when I grow up, I will be a carpenter. A carpenter, a carpenter, a carpenter I will be. I may think that when I'm six years old, but when I grow up, I will not be a carpenter. So why is it that I will not be what I said I will be? Because I grow. I would say when I was a child, that's what I thought. Now I know better. I've gone to school. I've improved. I've learned new things. I've become better. So I'm not going to be a carpenter. I'll be a pastor. What has changed? Growth and improvement. But God doesn't grow. And God doesn't improve. So there is no point in time when God will grow to the point that he will change something he said at another time. So what God said a million times, a million years ago, he will not grow a million years later and say, oh, a million years ago, I was God, but I was a young God. Now I have become an older God. I'm wiser and more mature. So I cannot do what I said a million years ago because I've grown 
and I have improved. God doesn't go through that. God is the same. He doesn't change. What he said a million years ago is still relevant today because God does not change. For us as human beings, it's very difficult for us to imagine anything that does not change because change is the constant of our experience. But to God, not changing is the constant. So what he said yesterday, what he said to your father, he will not improve and outgrow it. He would always do what he said he would do because he doesn't change, he doesn't grow, and he doesn't improve. God doesn't get better. The God we have now is not a better version of the God Noah worshipped. He's the same God, the ungrowing, the unimproving God, who is who he is at all times the same. God does not change. And because he does not change, he is reliable. That's why we can rely on him. To be reliable is to be trustworthy. It means I can build on him. I can establish on him. I can lay my foundation in him because he doesn't change. No, it's very interesting that uh, when you consider our earth, our earth is a very, very, very changing earth. We know that. The earth moves very, very fast. It's said that the earth moves at the speed of 1,700 kilometers per hour. On its axis, we are, this thing is going very fast. 1,700 kilometers. That's a very, very fast speed. And not only that, whilst it is doing that, it is moving at 27 kilometers per second around the sun to give us a year. So for us to say next year it will be better, the sun has to run at 27 kilometers per second to give you next year. At this pace... Of 1,700 kilometers per hour on its own axis, 27 kilometers per second around the sun, we consider the earth solid enough to build on it. We build skyscrapers on it, something that is moving at this pace, and yet we find it difficult to build on a God who doesn't change who doesn't improve, who doesn't get better. If you can build a house on this earth, you have no excuse not to have foundation in God. God is faithful. Why? Because he's there. He's called the ancient of days. He doesn't improve doesn't get better. If we live for another one billion years, God will not be a different God. He'll still be the same. From eternity to eternity, he's still the same. God is faithful. But not only is God faithful, his word is faithful. God's word is faithful. Numbers chapter 23 verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie. Nor a son of man that he should repent. What has he said and will he not do? Or has he spoken and will he not make it good? God is faithful. And because of that, his word is faithful. Why? Why? Because his word carries his worth. His word carries his worth. Your word carries your worth. My word carries my worth. If I say I will give you a 
100 million dollars. I promise you I'll give you 100 million dollars next week about this time. That word carries my worth. If I don't have a million, 100 million dollars, then that word has no power. Because that word is empty. I have no worth. But if somebody else, like some of those crazy guys with a lot of money, I don't even want to mention their name in my church. Those crazy guys who own so much money, hundreds of billions. If one of them, as crazy as they are, tells you, I'll give you a hundred million dollars next year or next week by this time, that word carries their worth. Do they have the worth to support the word? Yes. All that will be left will be whether they are willing. Not whether they can, but whether they will. So when God says to you, I will bless you, his word carries his worth. So you have to define whether he has the worth, he has the currency of blessing. If he has the ability to bless, then his word that he will bless you is faithful. It is faithful. It's as faithful as his personality. So God is faithful. His word is faithful. His word is reliable. He never changes. So his word doesn't change. And he honors his word. Has he said, and will he not do? He does not just honor his word selectively. He honors his word fully. Now, when it comes to that, and maybe next week I'll deal a bit with that. You know, many times people say, but I believe God and it didn't happen. Because we believe God selectively. We don't believe God as God, we believe something that sounds nice to us. So we can go through the Bible picking nice verses and not picking the whole counsel of God. And think that if we can cherry pick the word of God, then good things will happen to us. That's not how it happens. God watches over his word, the entirety of his word to perform it. He's faithful. His word is faithful. So when you say, I believe in God, you have to know that there is something about God that will not change. And it is that which does not change that he bases to open doors for you. His word is faithful. So first, God is faithful. Everybody say, God is faithful. God's word is faithful. Everybody say God's word is faithful. And number three, God's ways are faithful. God's ways are faithful. His ways are faithful. Psalm 18 verse 30 says, As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. He is a shield to all who trust in him. His ways are perfect. His ways are consistent with who he is. The God of the Bible is not a capricious God. He's not a capricious God. That means he's not fickle, he's not temperamental, and he's not given to unstable actions. He's not a confused God who does things by heart. His ways are perfect. We were just singing that there, there is nothing that God cannot do and what he cannot do doesn't exist. And there is truth in that. But although God can do all things, he cannot do all things. Seems like a contradiction. God can do 
all things, but he cannot do all things because he cannot do anything that is inconsistent with who he is. He cannot. He cannot under any circumstance, even if he tries, he can't. Because his personality will prevent him from doing what he is against himself. So God cannot lie. He cannot. If he says something which you think is a lie, the moment he says it, it will be true. So Abraham, I have no child. That is the current truth. Until God says, you are the father of many nations. The moment God says that, one of them must be a liar. Either Abraham is a liar or God is a liar. But once God has spoken it, it ceases to be a lie. It is a truth. God cannot lie. He cannot. If you are dead, Lazarus, and he says, come forth, one has to be a lie and it's not going to be God. <laughs> so death has to be a lie and God has to be true. God cannot lie. God cannot fail. God cannot break his covenant. Because all of these will be acting against his faithfulness. So God's ways are faithful. What does that mean? His ways are consistent. That is why Job, in the time of the greatest affliction, where every experience is contrary to what he expected, he still knew God's ways are faithful. So he says, I can't explain what is going on, but I know God's ways are faithful. I know my Redeemer lives. He will stand at the last day. That is inconsistency with his nature. Job could then say, even if he strikes me, I will trust him. Why? Because he has come to trust that God is faithful, his word is faithful, and his ways are faithful. God is not capricious. He doesn't get up one morning and do just something. No. Everything he does is in consistence with who he is. That's why we can trust him. The unchanging God. The faithful God. He does not lie. What he says he will do, he will do. He keeps covenant to a thousand generations, even to those who break his covenant. He made a covenant to David, David's son, Abraham, what's his name? Solomon broke the covenant. But God says, yeah, if you are unfaithful, it will not affect me. I will remain faithful. Even when you are not there to supervise the covenant, God will always be there to keep his covenant. He keeps his covenant both to the living and to the dead. You know, in marriage, they say the marriage covenant is till death do us part. Because we are humans. But our covenant with God doesn't end with death. Because God never dies. And if one party to the covenant dies, the other party, the unchanging one, will supervise that covenant and see to it that it becomes a reality. He is faithful in all his ways. That's the God we serve. That's the God we worship. That's the God we believe in. And that is why 
We can build our faith on him. We sang that song. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. Including the ones we've built skyscrapers on. Because one day there will be an earthquake. And we'll realize, oh, the earth is not as stable as we thought it was. And we invested so much on the presumption that the earth is faithful. But the earth is not faithful. There's only one faithful. And he's called Jehovah God Almighty. And so the Bible says those who build on him will not be put to shame. Those who trust him will not be put to shame. Having faith in the faithful God allows you to receive from the faithfulness of God. We will talk about that next week. Because that is where faith and faithfulness connect. Our faith is not in ourselves. Our faith is not even in our prayer. You can say, as for this thing, I've prayed. Hey, I've prayed, oh, I've prayed. And God, God will hear. God doesn't answer your prayer because of the intensity of your prayer. Because much of your prayer, as intense as it is, may even be of course. You may be preaching, praying amiss. You are praying sincerely, but it's all blank. With fasting behind it. <laughs> if you presume that God hears your prayer because you denied yourself food, you are crazy. God doesn't answer your prayer because you didn't eat. He answers your prayer because he is faithful. He is faithful. Our faith, therefore, is not in our acts, but in God who he is. It's not in how many times I pray, how many times I fast, how, how much prayer I pray, how intense my prayer is. They are all good. But that's not the basis on which God answers our prayer. If his faithfulness is not there, no door will swing. But because he's faithful, when we ask him to open a door, he doesn't do it because we asked. We does it because he is. Because believe you me, no matter what you ask me to do, if I can't do it, I can't do it. You can kneel in front of me, pastor, please help me, pastor, roll on the floor, cry, fast, do whatever. I say, I can't do anything about it. You can do, travel from here to Burkina Faso and back. It will change nothing because I can't do it. But if I can do it, you don't even need to roll on the floor. I will do it for you. Somebody say, God is faithful. His word is faithful. His ways are faithful.